And hello, hello, hello. Just triple checking. I believe the audio is working. Uh, I have with me Jess from uh, Kaschen Germ, I believe. <laughs> Hope I'm saying everything correct. Uh, hello and welcome. If you can give us a brief introduction uh, about yourself and your, stu your studio, that would be perfect. Yeah. Um, hi, I'm Jess. Um, I'm the game designer and producer um, for this game, and I have a background as a writer and researcher. Um, our team is Cash and Gem. We're a close-knit team of three, um, making short, beautiful, hopeful games with a focus on nature. Ivan is our team lead and programmer with a background in film production, and Blythe is our artist, who's a practicing sculptor and fine artist. Awesome. Yeah, it's really interesting because already this is not a very common background uh, for people coming into the program and pursuing the route of, of creating games. So, well, I'm, I'm dying to know how did this happen? You know, what was the thing that made you guys go, hey, let's make a let's make a crab game. Is it a crab? <laughs> Sorry, is it a crab? Yes, yeah, it's a it hermit a... crab. Okay, the, okay. The main yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I think really we've all always loved playing games and always been really interested in games. Um, and a while ago, Ivan and Blythe together made um, two previous games. Uh, one of those was recently showcased at WASD and selected for the Curious Indie Game Showcase. Um, but they were all kind of two-dimensional, quite short games, and they decided they wanted to work on something a bit more ambitious mm -hmm. and a bit bigger. Um, so they brought me in. And we started working on this project together, which is a bit bigger. It's a 3D underwater adventure game. So, yeah, a bit bigger in scale. Awesome, awesome. Why underwater? Um, I think it's it kind of comes from a couple of different areas. Partly, we have loved playing a whole bunch of different underwater games, um, stuff like Subnautica, Bioshock, uh, Abzu, like a, I think we just really loved the setting, but also we wanted to tell a story that kind of has a resonance with environmental research um, mm -hmm. and inspires a sense of wonder and curiosity about the natural world. And underwater felt like a really good setting for that. Interesting, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I feel like uh, it's great to to hear how you're utilizing um, uh, your backgrounds essentially to to tailor your game and make most of your knowledge to turn that into the into the game experience. How have you found sort of the gamification of the ideas that you guys might have had? Was it a challenge? Was it an exciting process? Which yeah, one, which definitely one is it? exciting. Um, I think maybe less of a challenge in the, um, obviously with the experience they've had of making games before, I also had experience writing kind of narrative games before. It's obviously very different and kind of transferring that, but I think really it opened up a world of possibility for us. There was a lot of kind of nailing down the mechanics, coming up with really exciting gameplay and level design based off of those mm -hmm. mechanics and the different kind of ideas from our research. Um, so a lot of this is based on kind of climate research and stuff as well, which is why it's set in a house that has been uh, lost to the sea in kind of a climate change future. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, it's come from all of that. <laughs> yeah, I see. Yeah, the, I, I think you absolutely, guys, uh, you've done a great job with the setting because it, you know, it opens that uh, opportunity to now wear a, a bottle cap as your shell and, and plenty more rather than, you know, being out in the ocean and uh, having perhaps a bit of a melancholic experience of, you know, the sea being polluted. Instead, you're throwing the hermit crab right into the fray of, of being in, in just in a room, the whole room already underwater. So I think yeah. I, I think that's great. That's great. In terms of setting, we've had a, quite a few cozy games. Uh, where do you think your, your project fits in? Uh, commercially, uh, how are you trying to, to, to break through? Yeah, I mean, I think we're definitely trying to sit within the cozy games market, which is obviously a massively expanding market that's still really yet to reach its peak. Um, but in a slightly different way to some other cozy games, I think we're really modeling ourselves on games like Journey by that game company. Um, and similar to their, their other games in trying to create something that's quite kind of artistic and beautiful mm -hmm. and about discovery and exploration. 
Um, and since that game company have moved into making mobile games and kind of moved away from the games they were making, we feel like there's a bit of a market gap there that we want to fill. Great, yeah. No, it sounds tangible. It sounds like you guys researched it, uh, which is which is great. It's perfect. So joining into Transfizer, what was like the, the most... Yes. The most improvement you guys were able to make as a, uh, whether it be thanks to the resources, uh, the the capital you've been supported with, uh, what was it that you think propelled you forward the most? I mean, all of it's been amazing. We started Transfuser with quite a new idea, so we've been able to make this much progress in three months, um, which has just been amazing for us to be able to focus and dedicate the time to it, and the funding helped us do that. But really, I mean. The support we've had from our mentor, Elena from Yali Games, she's been amazing at getting us really focused on the big business side of um, running a games company like from the start, um, which has been fantastic. And all of the Games Business Academy sessions have been really valuable in terms of learning for us, providing insight into the games industry, but also kind of feels like a uni course packed into three months. It's been, it's been amazing. So in terms of it being feeling like a university course, what do you think are the differences and what do you think are the similarities for people that are recent graduates that might they yeah. might find familiar going into it, you know? I mean, I think deadlines feel quite familiar from mm -hmm. university courses. Um, and I think that's really good. It's really good to make sure that you are um, kind of hitting those goalposts in your development process. Um, so having the deliverables at the end of each month has been really great at kind of signposting to us where we should be with the development at which stage and kind of getting things ready at the right times, which feels really nice. Um, but it kind of feels very different from a university experience in that we've also had, it, it feels much bigger. It feels like we are starting to launch ourselves as a company. This is our kind of beginning of our journey to becoming a successful, sustainable studio. Mm -hmm. um, and it feels like there's a lot of support in helping you understand the industry and helping you kind of set up within the industry, understand your niche, understand market potential, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, so the support feels really geared towards moving straight into the industry um, rather than completing a university degree. Great, yeah, awesome to hear, awesome to hear. Uh, how many more funky shells for the hermit crab do you think we're gonna see in the future? I think we're What's the see scope? <laughs> Yeah, um, so this is kind of the beginning first area living room. Um, we have a story that we want to tell across multiple levels. So each room of the house will be a kind of new level with its own feel. Um, and we want there to be a couple of different shells in each room that you have to kind of work towards as your goals. Um, and each of them kind of enables you to do new and exciting things. Um, so there will be plenty um, and a mix of like more man-made kind of objects like bottle caps, bottles, that kind of thing, and some more like organic shells that are really precious. Awesome. I think it opens uh, an opportunity to, you know, uh, gamify it more and have each uh, impact things like movement, etc. But that's just me. Uh, that's just me game developing for you. <laughs> oh, no, absolutely. Yeah. We've got so many potential shells that will enable completely different forms of movement. Um, like traversal throughout the room is a really big part of the game um, that feels really good, kind of riding currents, there's gliding, um, there's a fair bit of kind of climbing onto things. Um, I'm sure the gameplay is showing off uh, a couple of currents at the moment, but um, yeah, um, I, we want that to be a really big fun part of it. So the shells providing new potentials is also really exciting as part of that. Awesome. Uh, as we are uh, running out of time shortly, uh, I'll have two more questions. Uh, first one will actually be about the the gameplay. So, do you think there will be more? Uh, you know, are are we gonna see more UI? Is it uh, is a lot of the a lot of the UI uh, just baked into the game? Um, and do you think there will be? Will it be very much lore and experience driven, uh, a sit down, play through, play through and finish? Or will there be some, uh, I'm not sure, uh, hermit crap development of sorts? Uh, just trying to figure out what's the end, end goal experience for the player. 
Yeah, so it's kind of um, in multiple parts here. I mean, the end goal really is to traverse through the rooms of the house and get to the, the top of the house. Um, as you're going through, you're uncovering kind of little objects that are telling you the story of the people that used to live in the house. Um, and you'll find more and more of that as you progress through the house. Um, you're also ultimately chasing the perfect shell, um, which is tied in with this. Um, yeah, so there's there's quite a few kind of entangled goals that feel like they mesh really well um, that you're working towards throughout the gameplay. Amazing. I love the concept of a perfect shell. In my in my mind, as soon as you said it, I, I imagined, I'm not sure anyone... Uh, remembers the bionicle how there was a golden mask anyways the the perfect shell is yeah. a kind of <laughs> the the elusive <laughs> perfect shell cool okay and the last thing is uh, an opportunity for you to give a quick uh, game ad where people can find it or expect it um give it your best <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think um, it's going to be a little while before this is ready for full release. We're hoping to have a demo in place maybe early next year. Um, we're hoping for a multi-platform release. We might start with targeting PlayStation. It feels like that ties in very naturally using analog for and haptic feedback for kind of the feel of being a hermit crab. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is a uplifting gaming experience full of discovery and beauty, and you don't need loads of gaming experience. Uh, you just need to come and enjoy exploring the world and feel what it's like to play as a hermit crab. Amazing. Wonderful. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, we'll be back very shortly with another team. And this was this was uh, Cash and Germ for you. 